he, um, he, when it was done, right, he, um, he encountered uh, Bart Sabrell on the way out, because, like, Sabrell, he was actually invited by the Japanese because he was going to be a surprise guest, you know, on the, on the show that they were doing. And, uh, well, the Aldrin left before that actually took place, and uh, Sabrell managed to meet him, up, meet, meet him down in the, um, in the lobby, and, you know, he was trying to get him to swear on the Bible, and uh, it, kind of, it, it kind of annoyed him because, like, um, Aldrin had just, you know, been given $2,000, you know, to talk about something that he didn't do, Right, and uh, you know the insults kept flying here and there. Like um, Aldrin, he was calling Sabrell an attention seeker, and Sabrell was like, "Well, you're the one who, who just got two thousand dollars to talk about something that you didn't do. You know that makes you a, a thief, a coward, and a liar." And you know, with the insults flying this way and that, it was only a matter of time before things got physical. And so, and so, so Sabrell got punched by Aldrin then. Oh well, I suppose that's what happens when you've got something to defend. Now, the the motives of uh, actually smacking somebody up, I mean, obviously, if you're being called a thief and a liar and, and, and what have you, uh, that'd make somebody who is, in fact, doing the right thing uh, pretty angry and, and maybe lash out. But then again, if I'm doing the right thing and somebody's accusing me of stuff, it does make me angry, but I don't smack them about it. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I don't know... You, can't really prove anything from from that perspective but moving on uh, how many uh, different craft did nasa experiment with before coming up with the final rocket design that allegedly went to the moon uh well they made um they made several different um unmanned missions you know to the through the radiation belts and uh, they had the um the uh the explorer satellites they had the pioneer probes and um they had a, a whole bunch of unmanned missions that they sent up there. They had the Ranger, the Surveyor, and the Lunar Orbiter missions, right? And uh, on the manned side, they had um, they had the Mercury and the Gemini flights, but those were just you know Earth orbital flights. And uh, but uh, as for the, uh, it's, it's, it's another thing that you brought that up because like um, one of the things that uh, that uh, the pro NASA side often like to do is they like to look at any. Um, post Apollo photographs, and they say, "Oh, look, this mountain looks the same. This crater looks the same. This looks the same as that." They say, "Well, if they're so, they're, how come they're the same as as what was photographed on Apollo?" Well, the answer is that prior to Apollo, they had the lunar orbiter spacecraft, which resolved all these all these craters and um, and landmarks and all that sort of stuff. So all NASA would need to do is to model their sets and props off the of the lunar the lunar orbiter photographs. And we'll that's a good spot to leave it on. We're going to break. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. My very special guest is Jarrah White from Australia. Back in a moment. What is it that's in your home that causes grown men to cower and children to run for cover? Run! Food storage! That's right. Food storage shouldn't be scary. It's simply your food. We are the premier providers of long-term, storable, GMO, and MSG-free meats, veggies, fruit, dairy, and pantry essentials like powdered butter. We even have a gluten-free line. Food storage shouldn't be scary. Let Simply Your Food help you with your food storage needs. Go to simplyyourfood.com or call 866-251-7511 and let us take the scary out of food storage. Go to simplyyourfood.com or call 866-251-7511 and let us take the scary out of food storage. Most Americans know the significance of July 4th, 1776. However, few know the importance of September 17th, 1787, the day the Constitution was written and adopted by our founders. Unfortunately, over 200 years later, this sacred document is under attack, along with our beloved Republic. Throughout the span of history, brave men and women have rallied behind banners, which have served as symbols of liberty against the forces of tyranny. Today, we have the Constitution pride flag to show our support for the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, freedom, liberty, and justice for we, the people of the United States. Now available at www.1787flags.com. Get your very own Constitution Pride flag today and receive a free pocket Constitution with your order. www.1787flags.com, the official website of the Constitution Pride flag. That's www.1787flags.com. Following a radiological or nuclear event, 
Radioactive iodine may be released into the air and then be breathed into the lungs. Radioactive iodine may also contaminate the local food supply and get into the body through food or through drink. When radioactive materials get into the body through breathing, eating or drinking, the thyroid gland quickly absorbs the chemical. Radioactive iodine absorbed by the thyroid can then injure the gland. But you can protect yourself with use potassium iodide, which acts to block radioactive iodine from being taken into the thyroid gland and can help protect this gland from injury. To take advantage of very special rates, click on the banner at AmericanFreedomRadio.com and don't forget our convenient delivery service, Ideal Health New Zealand, leaders in alternative health. That's AmericanFreedomRadio.com and click on the Ideal Health New Zealand button. Proudly brought to you by the Vinnie Eastwood Show.com. What would your life be like if you woke up each morning with new vitality, feeling better than you have in years, and you noticed a difference in your sleeping patterns, blood sugar levels, and had a sense of well-being overall? There's something that is changing thousands of people's lives, and you could be one of them. It's called Heart and Body Extract. Sharon Harris, co-creator of Heart and Body Extract, talks about the positive effects of Heart and Body Extract. What happens with the formula Heart and Body Extract is it's giving the body the necessary vitamins, minerals, amino acids, enzymes, and phytonutrients so, so the body will heal itself. And yes, the body does have the ability to balance blood pressure, balance cholesterol, clean and unclog the arteries. It can also work on uh, balancing the circulation for diabetics. So the body is an amazing thing. It simply needs some help so it has the tools to heal itself. Heart and Body Extract gets results. To order your two-month supply, call now, toll-free at 866-295-5305. Order online at hbextract.com. Warning. Warning. American. Warning. American Freedom Radio. This habit forming. American Freedom Radio. This habit forming. Use the truth carefully. Truth Brigade Radio. Live Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 p.m. Only on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. The truth has just gotten hotter. I got some so called friends. To the lighter side of genocide, broadcasting live from the fabulous nuclear free and name only New Zealand. My very special guest, Jarrah White, joins us for the entire two hours today. Um, and judging on the first segment here, he's definitely got a lot more than just two hours of material to shell out. <laughs> How long have you been studying um, the, the moon hoax for, Jarrah? Well, I've been studying it for about, uh, I don't know, 10, 12 years or so. And uh, my first my first documentary on this subject, that came out in 2006. And uh, it's, been, it's been going from, from there ever since. Like, it's been the Moonfaker series. I've t- produced um, Flagging the Gems, Apollo Zero, uh, a whole heap of documentaries on the... Um, on the moon hoax, and it all covers a diversity of subjects. You know, like the like the blast crater issue, the radiation issue, the LRO photographs, the um, the uh, waving flag, everything. And, uh, just that's the house. Well, it, it seems like with, with a lot of uh, conspiracies, um, they have a lot of red flags, and I, and I always say that uh, like nine eleven, for example, has more red flags than China does. Mm. And uh, would you agree that that's pretty much the same thing here? Well. Uh, yeah, I, sp- I suspect that there's a whole lot of um, of, uh, of uh, shady stuff happening with the 9/11 thing. But you know, I haven't looked at um, 9/11 in a while. I produced a um, a, uh, a documentary on it last last year. You know, in honor of a of a friend who actually made a, um, a wrote a book about it. You know, Ralph Rene. He wrote the book NASA Moon America. He also wrote a book on 9/11. I produced a documentary on um, you know based on his book last year, but. Um, you know, I haven't looked at um, 9/11 as as in depthly as I have with the whole moon landing stuff. So I just, you know, prefer to stick with what I'm what I'm familiar with. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Well, you know, I wasn't wasn't uh, saying that we should talk about 9/11. More more talking about the uh, the huge amount of red flags that uh, 9/11 has is comparable to the amount of red flags that the moon landing has. Oh, okay, okay, I see what you're saying. So let's let's think about this. I mean, from from start to finish, w- what started the space race? It was it was Sputnik, wasn't it? Yes, that's correct. It was Sputnik, and um, it ultimately became sort of a um, sort of a shouting match between the United States and the Soviets, saying, "Oh, look what we can do! Oh, we can do that too! Well, I can do that better!" You know, this, that, this, that, all back and forth with one another. They and in the and ultimately, right? They 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 went out to um, 
sort of cut corners and find alternatives to make themselves seem more superior than they than they really were. You know, like the Russians themselves, it was later revealed that the Russians they had taken, um, you know, considerable considerable risks and um, and and um, and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, well. Well, anyways, so basically what they did was they laid, they constantly, um, you know, hide, hide various um, misfortunes or, um, or, uh, or flaws with their daughter, and you know, they just, they just blabbed, oh, it was superior, like this and that, and uh, like with Gagarin, for example, on Gagarin's flight, he actually had to eject from his um, his spacecraft before landing down, down to the surface, you know, parachuting down there. They just said, oh, he stayed in there the whole time, and uh, but that was that wasn't revealed until much, much later. And uh, the Russians themselves, they had been working on this um, on this uh, on this moon ship, the um, the N1, and that that it exploded, and they just denied it existed. You know, they were trying to get this N1 rocket to work, this version of the Saturn V, and they covered that up. That was covered up for 30 years, and so obviously the Americans they did similar things with their program because, like, they they obviously couldn't get, they couldn't get to the moon because of the radiation issue, and so uh, well we have to find we have to find some alternative. Well, let's fake it. Let's fake the moon landing. And of course, the Kennedy's promise was simply to land a man on the moon by the end of the decade, by um, by you know by, by placing their, their man up there before the Russians did. Okay, we do that with Apollo 11. What now? Okay, let's call it off. But we can't call it off. We've got all these other missions that the scientific community is demanding. You know, like um, precision missions, missions to the far side, missions to the North Poles on the moon, missions to Mars, missions to Venus, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, well, that has nothing to do with what we were trying to do. We were just trying to trying to you know achieve achieve the military objective. So let's find a way to get out of it. And so what they do is they had the the Apollo 13 mission, which had you might have seen the film with Tom Hanks, in which the um, the oxygen tank you know explodes and the astronauts have to get back to the back to Earth you know without landing there. Well, it, what happened is after that, after the Apollo 13 mission, the um, the Apollo programs the Apollo program was cancelled. You know, all the ambitious what's plans. The, what significance does the number 13 have for the Apollo program? Uh, I'll say, see, they, they, that's that's the mission number. They all number their missions, you see. Like um, Neil Armstrong's was Apollo 11. The next one was Apollo 12 with with um, Pete Conrad and Al Bean. Then there was Apollo 13 with Jim Lavelle, Hayes, and Swigert. You know, they. Um, I was they more all... talking about kind of uh, the the occult side of things and the uh, the reference to the number 13. And it always seems very interesting, like all these numbers and dates and everything come up in oh, very okay. suspicious circumstances. Yeah, yeah. Well, they all have, uh, they all, 13 they all was unlucky for some. <laughs> I see, I see. I see what you're getting on. Well, anyways, as I was saying, after the Apollo 13 fiasco, they, um, well, supposed fiasco, I should say, they they cancelled all the future manned missions, you know, to um, to to the far side of the moon or the or to Mars or whatever and stuff, and they've effectively sent sent uh, space exploration, manned space exploration, back to the Stone Age because, like, there hasn't been any manned missions to the moon since 1972. You know, they had a few other missions planned, but they found one ways or another to limit. The amount of footage that they'd have to fake, you know, like say, say making the, the surface, you know, overly bright, or, or you know, pointing the camera directly at the sun, you know, and burning out the video con tube, and uh, like you might have recalled back when they was broadcast on the television, this footage was all grainy, black and white uh, garbage. What that was is they actually, would you believe that it was actually filmed off a TV screen? So rather than giving the public a direct feed of what they were supposedly receiving from the moon, they um, they had a camera set up. You know, looking at the television screen that was projecting this stuff, and then they sent that to the public. That's what the world saw. This further degraded the the footage, and they did that on all the missions, even the ones that had color TV. And uh, so, well, yeah, they at the time at the time, what kind of camera equipment did NASA, the most technologically advanced U.S. government agency, have? Like, what? I I, I scarcely believe that they didn't have access. To color cameras, the, on, on the first mission they had the um, the uh, Westinghouse uh, 10 frame per second television camera that was in black and white. Now on the next missions Apollo 12 and uh, and, uh, and uh, Apollo 12 to 13 and 14 they had a they had a color version of that camera, and uh, then on the on the last three missions which they had the lunar rover they had a little um, remote controlled camera you know built onto the actual vehicle itself. But you know they only. They only filmed it when the when the rover had stopped, you know, like between stations. They didn't actually film it, you know, when it's driving here. And they had some they had some um, 16 millimeter uh, stop motion cameras as well. But you know, they they only like okay, we filmed it here, then we just stop it off there, you know. And like as I was saying, were, when it came to the TV footage, they found ways to limit or degrade it, you know, like be it filming off the TV screens or overexposing the 
surface or limiting the amount of time you use it or whatever and stuff. Sorry? Well, I said, or limiting the amount of time when you film it. Like when you were, they came with the, with the rover, they only like they didn't they didn't use the rover's TV camera to um, film the transverse from station to station. They only used um, used uh, still pictures and um, stop motion cameras for the, like the the rover videos and stuff. Hmm.